Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part six of my Guide to Kerbal Space program, and we are now going to learn how to build big rockets. Rockets big enough to go to the moon or other planets. So we're going to start with the command pod Mark 1. Use the page up down uh, key to move up to the top of the uh, top of the vehicle assembly building. Now you want to of course put a parachute on this and since this is going to be your main vehicle you want to put maybe a couple of solar panels on it. So uh, now from this we're going to build downwards, build ourselves a large enough ve vehicle that we can uh, you know fly this around. So I'm going to add a new thing called a, re a reaction control system. I'll show you what this does. What we do is we attach these little thrusters, and these can be anywhere on the vehicle. Those will help us steer it when we are in space. Now, they're not so essential right now, but they're very useful for, uh, later on when you get into docking. So below that, we're going to put a decoupler, and now we're going to build our main lander. This is what's going to put ourselves on the surface. So we put a one of the FLT-400s and a an LV-909 engine. Now, landing that is going to be hard because it's going to want to fall over. Plus, we haven't added any science yet. So, let's actually start adding the science. I'm going to add three of these science junior experiments. I'm going to use three-way symmetry to more or less put them around the put them around the base here, right? And to these, I'm actually going to attach landing struts, the LT1 landing struts. If you haven't unlocked any of these things, of course, you should just go back and run around Kerbin and find the various items. You know, there's a lot of places to get more science. We're going to add a ladder to this. Now, we only want one ladder. We're just going to very carefully stick that on roughly... Um, yeah, that'll do. Move it out from the side a little. This will make it easier to get back on board the spacecraft, although it's not essential for the planet Minmus or for the moon of Minmus, it's nice to have nevertheless. Okay, so that's these experiments. We need the mystery goo containment unit, of course. So we'll put a bunch of, put three of these on the side of the spacecraft as well. And we can actually just stick them on there. Okay, so these things we don't really, we're not gonna bring those home with us. Uh, we can bring ourselves the other two instruments we've unlocked. We can put the press mat barometer on the side there, and we can put the thermometer there. Now, we're not going to take the science lab as much as it's really cool and interesting. It very rarely makes sense, so I'm not going to use it in this case. In fact, you're going to be hard-pressed to find places where it is useful. Okay, so this is our lander. This is what's going to put ourselves on the surface. Now, what we want to add is some more uh, spacecraft below it. Oh, actually, no, one thing I want to add below this is some lighting. Because lighting is actually going to help us land on the surface better, right? So I'm just going to put three lights on here, one in each location, and when we see the surface coming close, it will help us, will help us recognize that. So, we want to build a rocket that's capable of uh, lifting this, right? Now, there's a couple of approaches to do this, right? The more traditional approach is you kind of build an upper stage with maybe, you know, liquid fueled engine. You can also add in some more RCS fuel. Now, nice thing about RCS fuel is that unlike regular uh, fuel and oxidizer, it can flow from anywhere. So the fuel from this will be usable by these engines, whereas this fuel here and this will not be usable by this engine, right? So this is just like extra stuff to carry along. Now, anyway, the as I'm saying, the one of the strategies is to build a bigger rocket below this, right? So you expand out the rocket. You go from a a rocket with you know one engine to a rocket with say three engines, right? And you know that's a very traditional rocket. You kind of fire this stage, and then once this stage is burned out, you fire this stage, and so on and so forth, right? That's all well and good, but that's not what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use a more efficient system. I'm going to use something, I'm going to call use something called fuel crossfeed. So I'm going to extend this by one more tank. So we have four tanks here. There we go. And we're going to use the LVT-45. That is the more, the easier to steer engine. That's what I already had, I guess. That will add some control to the rotation but because of its thrust vectoring. 
Now we're going to maintain three-way symmetry and we're going to add three rockets onto the side, just like we've been adding solid rocket boosters, right? So we're going to put these on radial decouplers and I'm going to try and put them exactly under these engines. Uh, no, these, um, exactly under the science junior units. And again, we're going to put three of the, uh, four of these on. Four engines. And for these en these engines here, we're going to use the LVT-30 because this one will be enough to provide steering. These ones will provide extra thrust. So extra thrust and cheaper and everything. Now, the way this is set up right now, these things will burn. This one would not burn. And then once we're finished, we ditch them off the side. And this one burns. But we can do better than that. We can use the fuel line, which I have just unlocked. I unlocked in the previous episode. So the fuel line will take fuel from one set of tanks and move it to another. So if I click here, I can drag it across and you see it's just like a strut. So as this engine burns fuel, it will drain from these tanks, but these tanks will replenish themselves with fuel from these external tanks. So the beauty of this is these three engines will burn, all four engines burn at the same time. And then as soon as you finish, as soon as you ditch these, this one has 100% fuel. So this means you get the same thrust all the way. Now, this is not really done with real rockets. I think the only one that is known to, that I know that does it is the Falcon. It does do fuel crossfeed. Uh, now, you notice it is kind of, um, it looks kind of flimsy. So it's good to add some struts to stop this thing wobbling. So just add a few extra ones so that if the spacecraft is subjected to any serious stresses, it will not wobble and move you, put you out of control. For extra control, we can add these uh, winglets here. Just stick a few on the bottom. You might have to move some of your struts and, and uh, fuel lines to fit this. Don't worry if that's the case. It's not a big problem. Okay, so that will mostly fly. We need to adjust the staging here on the side to make sure that all four engines fire at the same time. So we bring this engine down. And uh, yeah, that's a very simple crossfeed capable rocket and it's going to be quite efficient. Uh, we're also going to use these launch stability enhancers around the outside. Again, three of them. These are launch clamps, as you see. And finally, You'll notice that these things kind of these external engines sit between these winglets It would be nice if we could make these things, you know Jettison cleanly when we fire the decoupler. So I'm going to take these things called Sepatrons that are under the engine marker and I'm going to put them on here and I'm kind of going to angle them roughly at the same position on each side here and this is hard now you want the black end pointing inwards, right? The black end is the rocket. So these are basically tiny rockets that fire and you want them to fire at the same time as these decouplers. So look for the stage the decouplers are in, all right? And move the separatrons into that stage. Also, you take the struts and move them into the same, the launch clamps and move them into the same stage as the engines. And we are ready to go. Let's uh, try launching this. Now, Minmus is all the way, oh, there it is there. It's all the way out there. And, well, right now it's moving round to the left there. It's moving anti-clockwise, and it will actually pass across the orbit really soon. So uh, I might actually just do a bit of time acceleration so that we, yes, so we get some daylight. Okay, so the launch procedure is the same as usual. Enable SAS, throttle up to 100%, and then hit space, and we're gonna start going. This thing is actually pretty well balanced. It will give us all the, it'll accelerate at roughly the right rate. It won't, you know, over thrust. It won't, uh, you won't waste tons of fuel to aerodynamics. Of course, aerodynamics in Kerbal Space Program 0.23 are, not hugely, well, they're not amazing, to be honest. That's why you can get away with a spacecraft with these bits jutting out. If you're trying to do this with the Ferrum Aerospace mod, you will, of course, be in a whole lot more trouble. But that's not what we're doing here. I'm just trying to give you a nice wide-based lander that will be very easy to put down on the surface of Minmus. 
And uh, I'm going to split this tutorial into two parts simply because I don't want it to be too long. Okay, we're up to about six kilometers. And the fuel, if we right click on these tanks, you see the tanks, the fuel is burning downwards, right? Out of these. Whereas the middle tanks, no fuel is being used because it's all coming through those t pipes. Now at 10 kilometers, you want to do your 45 degree turn uh, over. Again, this is not the most efficient way to do it. Uh, once you get good at launching, you should do you know better turns, more gradual turns, and uh, ones which basically put you put you on a orbital trajectory with a little more efficiency. Now, as you're about to run out of fuel, you probably want to stop steering, take your fingers off the steering, and then hit the space bar. And there, look at that. Clean separation. Those things did not get anywhere near these wings. Okay, so we're more or less going along this. We're going to follow this uh, prograde vector here. If I just zoom in, the one thing you want to check is your app. This uh, Apple apps time. If this is you know getting to like thirty seconds, then you're going too shallow. But it's not. If it's getting up to a minute, you're going too steep. So. Kind of want to just keep that as low and flat as possible. Okay. So Minmus, uh, well, you can see the moon up in the sky usually. Not maybe you can't see it right now, but the Minmus is very, very hard to see because it is more or less a few pixels at this resolution. Okay, so I'm just keeping my Apple Apps time at about one minute, more or less by point keeping my spacecraft pointed along this. Uh, marker on the nav ball. That means that I'm taking a shallow trajectory which will uh, which basically means that I'm putting more of my thrust into sideways velocity rather than into vertical velocity. If you're if you're putting vertical velocity onto your spacecraft then you are of course fighting against gravity. Whereas if you're going sideways then gravity is not having anything to do with it. The main worry is if you don't have enough velocity, you will fall back. So I'm going to wait until my Apple Apps now gets up to about 100. And it's going to go very quickly. And also you can see, well I'll show you this in a minute actually. Once we get up to 100 kilometers, then you can see that there is this dotted white line that's being drawn through the, uh, through the orbit. That is the inclination relative to the, the orbit of the moon Minmus. Press X to cancel all my thrust. We're doing pretty good here. So I'm going to add a maneuver to put myself into a 100 kilometer orbit. If you remember, you just grab this, move it out very slowly, you create the maneuver node, you grab the prograde vector, and as soon as these things start to change positions, that's when you're pretty close. There you go, 102, 99. So that's, that'll get me that'll get me pretty close to a, a nice circular orbit. Don't be too obsessed with getting a circular orbit. It's not that uh, it's not that important. Now, we could try flying to the moon, but I don't think this spacecraft has enough delta v. Delta v is, of course, the equivalent of range. I'm going to go to Minmus because although it's further, it takes more fuel to actually get an encounter min to Minmus, but once you're there, it takes l a lot less fuel to land. So landing on the moon takes about a kilometer per second, landing on Minmus takes about 300, uh, 400 meters per second of delta V. So you're going to be much better off going to the more distant moon in this case. Let's do the time acceleration now that we've pointed our spacecraft the right way. There we go. Throttle up to 100%. Just make sure we get ourselves into orbit. Jebediah, of course, is just totally chill with us because he is a pro. I find calm Jebediah somewhat, uh, well, I find him more calming, I guess, compared to Crazy Eyes Jebediah. So, if you remember how we did this with the moon, we start, we put a maneuver node somewhere on the orbit. You know, just let's say start there. And then we dragged out the prograde vector until, oh, and there we're going to get a moon encounter if we go that way, but that's not necessarily the way we're going. 
So we want to go out to uh, Minmus's distance. So if you look at the Apple apps there, it's 49, this is 46, that's pretty close. You want to cross the orbit just a bit and then grab this, move it around and see, ooh, wow, that's going too fast. You see that? Because the moon encounter went and messed me up there. So bring this down a little. Well, 19, that's too much. <laughs> this is kind of hard to get the orientation on this. So, and remember it is 3D, so Minmus, unlike the moon, is slightly inclined, right? That means its orbit goes up and down. Okay, so here we go. Once we get to here, well, that will be our closest point to the orbit. Unfortunately, Minmus will be over there by the time we get there. So, let's grab this and move it around. Where is Minmus now? Again, up oh, there. Oh, good, good, good. Just going to keep moving this around the orbit. Now, here's the problem. You see where our orbit is going? It's actually going over the top of where the planet Min or the moon of Minmus would be. And you'll notice that this thing is uh, two minutes away in front of me. We probably aren't going to get it on this orbit, but I'm just going to try. So the best way to fix this is to go to the ascending or descending node somewhere out this way and just drag that down to make a course correction so that you encounter the planet. Now, you might have to muck around with this a lot, but as long as you know you're going in the right way on your initial burn, you should be fine. So I'm going to take this uh, burn here. I'm going to point myself at the the blue thrust vector, and it says a 43 second burn is what it's going to take. Uh, and actually, one thing I should be showing here while I've got them is uh, the RCS, the Reaction Control System. These are little rockets that are helping to move me around. They make my spacecraft more responsive, so I can turn it a lot faster, but doing so uses fuel. This helps a lot uh, with the really large spacecraft when this tiny capsule is not enough on its own to get you to your orientation in time. So, oh, I started burning a little early there. I want to time accelerate until it's about 30 seconds, I guess. So one of the things uh, to notice, it says 42 seconds, but that's assuming the thrust of this engine. We're going to run out of fuel halfway through the burn and switch to this engine, so we probably want to start early. So I'm just going to start now, and sure enough, we're going to burn out of fuel before, well, you know, probably about here, I guess, right? Let's let's see if I can guess this rightly. No, about there. Ah, oh, there we go. 660. Wow, this is a dangerously devilishly number of meters per second. So press space, and off we go again. Now. That thing seems to move nicely, but uh, it's not accelerating nearly as fast. In fact, it tells me it's going to take one minute, just over one minute, to get to that, uh, to get into its target orbit. We have the lights on the spacecraft here. They, you can turn those on, but they won't illuminate anything. Even though we're going into the night side, they're shining away from the spacecraft. See that? Yeah, nothing they illuminate. Right now, they are just junk. They are not that useful. But uh, don't worry, once we get to Minmus, it will be very helpful to know where we're trying to land when we're getting close to the ground. So yeah, RCS fuel uses something called monopropellant. That's modeled on something like hydrazine. The way monopropellants work is that you pass them over a heated catalyst and it causes the chemical to decompose into uh, other components. And uh, that's very efficient. Another example is peroxide, which is uh, decomposes into water and oxygen. It's what the jetpacks used in uh, James Bond, if, you're, if you've ever seen... Um, oh god, what's the James Bond movie with the jetpack? You know the guys that actually have real, genuine rocket packs? They use peroxide-based engines. Okay, so I've finished my maneuver, but I'm actually a little short. So the drill here is, of course, you just point your rocket along the velocity vector. And you thrust again. And you want to get up to 46,400. That way you're going to the same altitude as it. It looks like we're going past it, but we're actually going below it. There, we got it now. So the next thing we want to do is set up our encounter. So we want to 
find a place where we can do an inclination cor correction, right? So if we start, well, let's start by saying what happens if we do an inc inclination correction here, right? So we drag this down. It takes 41 meters per second to get ourselves an encounter, right? So that's possible. But if we go further out, right, let's, let's actually delete this. And let's do it at this node, for example, which is slightly further out and see what it takes. That only took 10 meters per second. Ooh, this is some rocket science here. Let's delete this. And we'll go further out still. Add a maneuver and try to get this encounter. There we go, five meters per second. So here's the thing, as you're going out, your velocity is going, slow, is going lower, right? And as your velocity is going lower, the easier it is to make an inclination change. The problem is, as you go further out, the uh, less closer you are getting to your encounter point, and therefore the more you need to thrust to change it, the more you need to change your course to actually arrive there. So if I go way out here, it'll start actually rising again because I need to thrust harder. Oh, there, so that's actually gone up to 7.8. So roughly about halfway, you're probably gonna get a good, uh, the good position to make the inclination change. So let's do it there, find ourselves, and look, we got ourselves an orbit. We're going to encounter it in one day. So it's going to have a periapse of 1900. You can adjust this, bring it down if you like, get closer. Get, so that's 1500. Now you can click on this if you like. And that will help. Sometimes when you're clicking on these, you'll find that there are other things in the way. So I'm just pulling this down until the periapse stops decreasing. Oh, there, 69. That is, that's pretty close. So we're going to fly over the pole of Minmus here, and that will kick our orbit up. So it tells us that in 10 hours, we're going to make a 26 meter per second burn. So let's uh, get ourselves set up for it. And again, we're using the RCS thrusters to turn ourselves more efficiently. There we go. And then time accelerate. Off we go. Now, you don't want to overshoot this, but if you do, that's okay. There's plenty of other opportunities to make this correction. A thousand times, 10,000 times is maybe too fast. Be careful you don't overshoot. You don't want to miss this small target. Three, two, one, four. So, you know, we're kind of near to where we need to be. It's less important with these deep space burns to actually get them exactly on cue. So I'm just going to go for it and see what it says, right? Watch, we're going to do this in real time. Firing up my engines. I'm only going to use like one third uh, thrust because otherwise starting and stopping it inside three seconds can be kind of hard. So watch this. RD and oh what happened there. So let's kill my maneuver node and see what our current situation is. Ooh, we're going to fly over the top of that at one meter per second. That's, uh, uh, sorry, at one kilometer up. Now, the problem is on Minmus, their mountains are five to six kilometers high. However, there is a trick that we can do here using the, using the reaction control system. So if I come out of map mode, the reaction control system also allows something called translation, right? You can actually move in multiple directions. But if you want to reverse a little, you can use the N key. See that? It's little bursts that are pushing me backwards. Now, it's not as powerful as a main rocket. But you can see just those tiny, tiny little puffs of, of uh, monopropellant have pushed my uh, periaps with relative to Minmus up to 36 kilometers. So this actually gets really important when you're docking. I've kind of just brought this along as a, a rever you know, as a reserve fuel tank. So now we're going to fly out to Minmus, which is out there somewhere. You might not see it just yet because it's, I guess, in, off in that direction. It's really small. So stay in the map mode and time accelerate to get yourself into the encounter that you need. And as you're getting close, you want to slow down 
your time acceleration because things can go wrong if you cross the boundary at high time acceleration. In particular, you can fly across the boundary and then completely miss the planet. So there we go. You see it counting down 1 hour, 50, 40, 30. And so here's an interesting thing as well. Note that we are going this way, but then once we actually enter the sphere of influence, the we weird things seem to happen, right? We're going to get curved back towards the planet and out this way. That's just, uh, that's more to do with like a change in reference frame here. And... In we go. Okay, so now you see how that orbit there actually translates to this orbit relative to Minmus. We're gonna fly over the pole. We wanna slow ourselves down. So I think we're gonna leave it there. We'll actually get down to the landing in the next episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>